Mind you, listen to me at all times, shake hands, good luck, and God bless. It's our co-main event, Tukstu Niambayar against Oscar Escandon. You know the gentleman quite well that is in the corner of Escandon, Robert. Yes, I do. You know, been in the gym with him the last uh, eight weeks. You know, he's did everything he had to do to be ready for this fight. Um, you know, ready? let the chips fall where they may now. Escandon trains by Robert's father, Ruben Guerrero. Oscar Escandon and Tukstu Niambayar. Niambayar looking to improve his record to 10 and 0 but he has escondone to deal with ray flores caleb plant alongside jordan hardy as well here in biloxi mississippi on this memorial day weekend guys i love the featherweight division caleb because it is so fast and 126 i think is one of the most loaded divisions in all of boxing absolutely a lot of superstars a lot of big names in the division um a lot of big matchups coming up like we talked about um Mares and Santa Cruz, Santa Cruz yeah. June so, 9th. yeah, these guys could be a potential matchup for the winner of that, depending on who, you know, gets their hand raised tonight. Well, last week, Gary Russell Jr., a very impressive performance over Joseph Diaz. Uh, you have a new champion with Josh Warrington as he upset Lee Selby. Uh, Carl Frampton is still there as well as Niambi are starting off. And look at the height difference, guys. Seven inches is the disparity between Niambi and Escondone. Yeah, and the NBR is throwing a good jab, you know, he's working that jab and picking his shots. He's going to work really early. Absolutely. There's no secret tonight in who wants to do what. Of course, Escondone, he's going to want to get in the pocket and try to break um, Nyambayar down. And Nyambayar, Nyambayar is going to want to be sticking and moving, you know, keeping distance between the two, trying to, you know, pick them apart. You know, the one thing about both of these guys, Escondone and Nyambayar, they're both Olympians, you know, so they got, you know, they got that Olympian experience and to see them come out and you know, when it goes on from here, it's nice. Definitely. Definitely a, a good amateur pedigree. Nice jab by Nyambayar. He's really mixing in and varying his attack. He's trained by John Bowman. This is their second fight together. Before that, Nyambayar was with Joe Goosen, who's been in the corner with Diego Chico Corrales, John Molina. Along with the Ruelas brothers, Gabriel and Rafael, back in the day, Michael Nunn and Joel Casamayor. I had done some work with Joe Goosen also. Joe Goosen also, he was... And a oh. right hand down goes Escondone, and they rule it a knockdown. I mean, he got hit and fell, but it seemed as if he was just off balance. His right leg was a little too far behind his left leg. Got hit with the right hand behind the head, you know, behind the ear, right on the ear. And, you know, same to the canvas, that's the eight count. And Escondone, this is a big round for him now, based on that knockdown. I think he, he's made an error, but again, we'll take a look back at it. And an uppercut that lands for Niambayar as Escondone moves forward. Yeah, Niambayar started this round really good, you know, boxing, mixing it up, up and down, you know, changing his direction and, until he got caught with that shot, that knockdown. Final moments of round one between Tutsu Niambayar and Oscar Escondone. Hi. And here is a look at the knockdown in the opening round. guys let's take a look back and revisit it and there you see us come down we looked at it before the break and it appeared as if it was a legitimate knockdown so Keith Hughes probably called it correctly yeah he landed that overhand right and it was right on the button so you know he did a great call seems as if it was a bit of a you know a balance issue involved in that it didn't seem if it was hurt or you know stunned or anything it just seemed to be off balance Wes Gundon, when we asked him about dealing with the height difference, he said, I'm used to fighting guys that are taller than me. This is just another big guy that I have to chop down. 
Ayan Bayar coming out, coming out, doing the same thing he was doing in the first round, boxing well, good punch selection. Do you think that a power puncher in the Ambayar, he was a silver medalist from Mongolia in 2012. Many people thought he was robbed of a gold medal, but that he's going to fight a more erratically because of the fact that he's dealing with a 10-8, or do you think he'll still settle into his game plan? I think it's just who he is. You know, he came out the first round swinging just the way he came out this second round. You know, he, he mixes him up very well, throws the body, you know, comes back to the head. You know, he comes with that straight right hand. He does a lot of good work in there. This one's scheduled for 10. Greatly appreciate all of you joining us here on this Memorial Day weekend. And we thank those men and women who gave the ultimate sacrifice in all those United States, those in our United States Armed Forces. We thank them so much for their tireless commitment to our great country. And Escondon and Niambayar, looks like the feeling out process, guys, has dissipated, but Niambayar is sticking with his fundamentals of the jab followed by the right hand. Absolutely. There wasn't too much of a feeling out process to begin with, but, you know, these guys are standing toe-to-toe, -to -toe, not a whole lot of, you know, feeling each other out, standing around, looking at each other. Uh, it's definitely an action-packed fight, so exciting for the fans and exciting for the crowd here tonight as well. That's one of the nice things about these featherweights is, you know, there's always action. You know, the hands are flying, their speed combinations come in faster. And, uh, you know, these guys are really throwing some leather. You know, you have Escondon who's throwing those big right overhand rights, and then you got NBA who's throwing nice body shots and with a lot of power on his punches. Well, and the fact that these guys are so quick, I, I mean, you look at coming up June 9th, you have Abner Maris Leo Santa Cruz. I mean, nice uppercut. And then, oh my goodness, and down goes Escondon with the right hand. Beautiful shot. He's been throwing that uppercut all night. He finally found a home for it right on the chin and did some damage with it. There is a reason why just one guy has lost to the distance with the MBR. It's because of power like that. And now the MBR sets him down again with the right hand. The one thing that the one thing that Escondon is doing wrong is he's getting up too fast. He's not taking the eight count, so your legs are not 100% under you. Nayambayo with two knockdowns of Escondon. Two knockdowns. And now look at Nayambayo. Puts his hands on his knees as to invite Escondon in. As the face is ridden and bloodied of Oscar Escondon. Tuster Nayambayo putting Escondon twice here in round two. Things can get rough out there. The bumper to the back of the 24! You think you got the brass? I proved it last season. That was last year. Now we've got young blood ready to take out the old. Start your engines. It's time to race. Tooks to Niambayar putting Oscar Escondon not once but twice in the second. Yeah, he caught him with that nice uppercut that put him down. And then he hit him with that straight right hand also that put him down for the second time. And as we spoke in the last fight with Rosario and Justin Deloach, you know, Justin not taking that full time, what Robert Guerrero spoke on, as Condone getting right up, it's that warrior in him, you know. A lot, the smartest thing to do would be able to take your time, take the take the eight count and, uh, you know, ease your way back in. But, of course, with him, he gets right up and he's, he's wanting to go back for more. Well, Escondone is a fighter. That's point blank. I mean, he, you know, he went ahead and he was stopped by Gary Russell Jr. when he challenged for the world title over a year ago. And he stated that he learned a lot in that fight. He actually pulled his back and was dealing with some injuries. But he said Russell was the better man. And right now, big right hand down. Another right hand. Escondone again. That's that general right hand for Tutsu Niambiar. There's a reason why those that are behind the MBR feel that he will be a world champion sooner rather than later. And if he continues to look like this, it will certainly could very well come to fruition. A big right hand. Down goes Escondon for the fourth time in the fight. Now MBR is doing a great job of keeping this distance. Even though he knows he has him hurt, he's not jumping on him. He's not smothering himself. He's making sure he's keeping his distance, keeping him on the end of his punches, using his rock bats. Beautiful work. Another right hand. What that's going to do is do is tie him up just like that. Now let him get off. Big Love the distance in the Ambayar. Love the distance. This one is over. Tuesday in the Ambayar. Vanquishes Oscar Escondon here in the third round. And my goodness, he continues to look impressive.
impressive. Very impressive. Yeah. Fundamentals, very impressive distance. Even though he knows he had him hurt, he knows he wanted to get him out of there. He didn't jump on him and smother himself. Yes.